Um, okay? Give me three things that you saw positive from the Falcons game that will translate into the Seahawks game. Well, we saw we saw the running game, uh, but this is something we talked about earlier with uh, getting the tight ends and running backs involved a lot more. Mm -hmm. Darren Sproles, a lot of option routes mm -hmm. on the third and five, third and four stuff. Like, yeah, I do love that a lot. And if you look at that Falcons game, eight of the receptions went to the wide receivers, 17 of them went to tight ends and running backs. So when you're going to your tight ends and running backs, it's masking the deficiencies at wide receiver. So, you know, we talk about Paul Turner, we talk about Bryce Treggs, well, Maybe you just need to get Zach Ertz involved a little bit more, you know? Come on, baby, make it hurt so good. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So you know, get get the tight ends involved. Maybe that means Trey Burton a little bit more playing time, you know, stuff like that. Get those t two to three tight end sets out there a little bit more. So the personnel yeah, really group Running backs, yes, tight ends involved. Yeah. Getting after the quarterback, I, yes, I think. Getting, gonna, get and get, and quarterback. containing them, gap integrity, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and just continue – you know, getting that offensive line, continuing that momentum as well. Because, I mean, Chip's playbook, there was only like three, four, five running plays. This one, there's like four to five as many, you know, different type of sets and running plays. That, so, as, you know, it, with a new scheme, a new coach, all that, you got to build a cohesiveness with the line as well. And we saw how bad they were earlier on in the year. Maybe, just maybe, they're getting that timing down. You know, so yeah. you don't and, see and, what and, and they can't. Games of the season. My man Adrian down there from Philly Influence. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. How are you? How, how are you feeling after that win? Oh, I'm feeling great. And, and just to piggyback what Gail was saying, Matty Ice met his defrosters. Betty Logan, Woo. Fletcher Cox, yes. Brandon Graham. I mean, they were all bringing the heat all game long. But I want to get to this offensive line for a second. Go for it. All right, 208 rushing yards. Right. Nice. They control the time of possession. 38-10 to 2150 so in a lot of ways their best defense was their offense keeping that potent yep. Atlanta Falcons attack off the field so Matty Iceman I mean Julio Jones is basically his only target they took mm -hmm. everyone we else contained away him so well yeah uh if if I know the stats correctly all right so Julio averages seven yards uh, after the catch on every reception we held him to 3.8 that's pretty Ooh. good. Nice. Bracket it Rope your finger, Jalen Mills. Rope your finger. <laughs> yeah. oh, there you go. No, 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 So, yeah, this is the first time I really saw the Chiefs from last season when they were second in the league in time of possession, keeping the ball away from the opposition. The complete opposite of Chip Kelly, right? Exactly. I mean, I mean that. So, I didn't want to uh, say his name. <laughs> yeah. No, no, the, his name, which shall not be spoken. And you, you know what it reminds me of? And it's a 4-3 it's, it's a defense, but it's a little bit different in the way they attack. Mm. Jim Johnson's philosophy. As, and now, joining us. I'm sorry. <laughs> are we sure this time? By, are we sure? Are we sure? Is this the man who just dropped fourth and John on Fox 29, Woo! Mr. Sean Brace? Thank you for joining us. Sean, how you feeling, buddy? You know we gotta support each other. Oh you know yeah, that. yeah. Someone love... buy this guy a beer. Yeah, you definitely. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta come down to the tailgate one of these times and see it for yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. I just don't want to get eaten by T Rex, and I'll be there. You know that. <laughs> no, that that that's classic Jeff's job. Now the Eagles are coming off of a big win at home. They're undefeated at home. What do you attribute to this win? What do you attribute to this this kind of? Weird paradox where where we can't win a game on the road, but for some reason <laughs> at home, I mean, do we got that home field advantage back, or, or what's going on here? You know, it's funny. I just came across a stat when I was just trying to look at like how many false starts um, happen up there in Seattle, and obviously in the last, I think it was like 2008. The stat was I just tweeted it out. So if you go to my Twitter page, you'll see it. But it was something along the lines of since 2008, obviously the 12th man leads the league in, in false starts uh, for the opposing team. But I'm third in that list, and only like 20, 20 away was, was the Eagles, and that that surprised me. Um, Look, the link is rocking. It's not an easy place to come in. The, the, you know, the opponents definitely maybe play with their in their own minds. They become their own own worst enemies. Uh, you know, it's Philadelphia at the end of the day. They, we eat our young. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah. um, and also, and also, I think that, that it's clear. It was clear to me 
in that game against Atlanta that we just were more dialed in, more focused. Now, I know that there were some dumb, you know, false starts. I think Ertz had three of them. Um, you know, there was some, definitely some dumb things, but that's going to happen throughout the course of a game. But it just felt like we were dialed in a lot smoother. We were able to run the football, which helped out a ton. Uh, but they had it going, and, and it's interesting. I, I just I think it's, you know, when you put Carson Wentz, he's a rookie quarterback out there. He's got to travel, or he's got to go on the road. It's not easy. And, uh you know, I just think they're they're clicking. They're more focused at home, and it wouldn't surprise me if that's the case. Now, what part of this big win was the play calling of Doug Peterson, which in recent weeks had come under fire, obviously. Some questionable play calls. He came out in that first drive, and I, I called it play calling with a purpose because every play call was designed to set up the next play call. You get a certain look, you go back to it. He did a lot of misdirections, pulled pulled Kelsey. Adrian just said that Kelsey had one of the best games that he ever saw because he was using him mm-hmm. to his strength and rolling him out. I mean, what do you what do you see from this play calling? Do you think Doug's starting to fit into a groove here? Well, I just think that I listened to the press conference um yesterday's press conference i listened to it today i was out of town yesterday so i was able to catch it on the way down to work today and uh you know it really sounded like the offensive line coach helped him out with this with the play calling uh because atlanta likes to bring eight guys in the box and and they just they really saw something on the tape and uh they knew that there was going to be one guy obviously that one defender that they couldn't do anything about but uh misdirections like you just pointed on uh you know some guys pulling some, some different things some different looks that they haven't done throughout the course of the season and Adrian does a great job breaking it down at affiliates.com with that stuff, and it's amazing to, to see what he does every single week. Uh, so he would know more about it, but listening to what he said, they definitely saw something on tape uh, that they definitely could exploit for the Falcons. And it'll be interesting to see if they're able to do that against Seattle because that, that defense is no joke as well. And I thought Atlanta's defense was pretty good. I, I thought they were good against the run. They were stout. They got some good guys that you know of, uh, and the Eagles dominated. They, they owned the line of scrimmage. Uh, Ryan Matthews, you want to get him as many carries as possible if that's the case you know if you get the ball to ryan matthews 15 to 20 times you're moving the football and that's a good thing uh we understand when sproles has got to step up but we 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 get it when when his number is called uh a lot like they did it against the cowboys in that following game as well but you know i want the ball in matthews hands and and if he's able to touch it 15 to 20 times you know darn well you're moving the football and i thought they did exactly that against the falcons and and they're molding this this team really in comparison to a kansas city team where it's a lot about the intermediate passing game, the running mm-hmm. game is huge, and a stout defense. Speaking of play calling, they almost like design their wide receivers almost out of the plays. You know what I mean? They The weakness was <laughs> the wide receivers, and they, they made a game plan to kind of push them to the side. Nelson Aguilar is dropping passes again. Jordan Matthews dropping yeah. passes. What, if anything, can the Eagles do – to improve either their play or is it time to call up Paul Turner? Where was Treggs all that game? Yeah, no, it's interesting. Um, it's amazing right now because the Eagles are doing this with one wide receiver, and that's Jordan Matthews. Um, you know, I, I think that they could start looking at some different things with Ertz, you know, getting him involved. I know we sing that. We say that every single week. Um, you know, with, with Selleck, um, you know, the, the Burton. They got some decent tight ends, so get them involved. But this is amazing. They're only getting production from one wide receiver. Nelson Aguilar is not helping them out, uh, which is crazy. So, uh, you know, it, it, they have, you know, when you look at Matthews, you look at Sproles, you know, Barner, I thought they, they, the rotation was nice with the running backs, and they were able to run the football. That's what they wanted to do. They want to run the football. It seems like that that's what they want to do every single week. I think that we would all want that to happen, and if you're able to do it, why go to the pass? And you're only going to help out Carson Wentz as a rookie. So I, 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 I think that they can still survive by getting the production that they're only getting from one wide receiver. I really do. Um, and I think Doug Peterson is play calling. It's progression. You know, I mean, you, you drop back, you would think that everybody runs that same type of style offense. Uh, but bottom line is, you know, it, it, there is something there. you got the intermediate pass routes. Wins drops back. First guy is not there. It's onto the second. It's onto the third. And he's going to find one of those guys that's open. And he's doing it effectively right now. He looks really good. So, um, But, you know, it comes down to running the football. If they can do that, that's what they want to do. They want to. They want to just absolutely own the line of scrimmage and run it down your throat. Hey, Sean, what's up? This is Gail. Now, look, looking forward to the Seahawks. You know, like the Eagles' defense have had some kind of struggles with uh, mobile quarterbacks. Now, you, some people are saying, uh, you know, Russell might be getting a little healthy. 
Are you, do you have a concern um, moving forward to this week with uh, Russell Wilson? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely concerned. This is the hottest team in the NFL. The hottest team in the NFL, Seattle Absolutely. Seahawks. Uh, going home, obviously, you know, coming across the country playing the, the Patriots. I think there's some truth behind that, that maybe they got really up for that game against the Patriots, and they're feeling themselves right now, and they're smelling themselves. But then the problem is, you think about it, it's the Seahawks. They've been there before. They know what they're doing. Um, so I'm definitely concerned. I'm concerned, you know, this is a tough spot. And, man, it's the 12th man, everything. that Seattle, how's Carson Wentz going to handle that? And, and will a wide receiver be able to catch a football against that secondary because those guys are still just doing it. Earl, Richard Sherman, I mean, it, you know, it's the same old, same old. Every single year. I think it was like for the last five years, they're the number one scoring defense. The last five years, the number one scoring defense in the league. And that's just disgusting that they can do this con, you know, a, a consecutive seasons and just count on them. You know what you're getting from them. And the fact that they went up to New England, held it down. I know I'm focusing on defense a little bit more, but to your point about the offense, yeah, uh, Russell Wilson scares me. He's a guy that you know drops back and he can make that play last a second longer. And all of a sudden, you get Baldwin escaping down the sideline, and who knows what's going to happen for the Eagles at the cornerback position? Nolan Carroll dealing with that concussion. You know, we're talking about Grimes now getting some PT. Uh, C.J. Smith possibly getting PT before Grimes. So who knows what those guys will be able to bring to the table? It's a tough spot. It's a tough spot. But here's what I know, guys. You know, we, we, I think we're all realistic. The Eagles will not win out from here on out. So if they do lose this game, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but they just got to bounce back. And, and you still got three division opponents. You still got some winnable, winnable football games, the Bengals, the Packers. So uh, I think we all agree that if you get to the 10 mark, you get to the 10 win mark, I think we're talking about some uh, some extra football this year. And that was completely unexpected for me. So I'll take it. So at the end of the story, if they do lose this game this weekend, which I'm not predicting right now, who knows? Um, it's not the end of the season, that's for sure. Okay. Yo, it's Adrian. What up, Sean? Hey, Yo, what up, Adrian? Adrian? What up? <laughs> All right, so you were, you were talking earlier yeah. about a lot of misdirection that the Eagles were running. Uh, the Falcons have two rookie linebackers that they were playing, Deion Jones, Devondre Campbell, and as rookies, uh, you over-pursue a lot of plays. And This was something I saw a lot on tape today as I was doing that film study. But going back to Break it down, baby. Yeah, break it down. Break it I love down. it. Yes, sir. All right, so going back to the Seattle game, uh, obviously their biggest weakness is their offensive line, and that's our biggest strength. So is that something you see, uh, you know, not only just win this game, but uh, they got to get to Wilson, obviously. And, yeah, what are you seeing from that? Well, you know, look, I, I think it's uh, there was definitely something there with Benny Logan returning, right? I mean, geez, oh, yeah. the defense oh, looked yeah. really good. Fletcher was all over the place. So, you know, I think that that's only going to help them out. Um, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, if you were to ask me how did the Eagles win this football game, they get after Wilson. They force a couple of turnovers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then combine that with the fact that maybe Seattle is smelling themselves and they're due for that loss, that, you know, that loss that brings them down, which would probably be good for them as well. You never know at this point in time of the season, a little humbling loss. Mm-hmm. Um so, yeah, I think that that could happen. But as far as, you know, I just look at what Benny Logan brought to the table. And that's just amazing because, you know, Fletcher Cox is the main guy. You think about yeah. Fletcher Cox, but then it was like, wait a minute, you know, he's he's got to have his Robin. If I could, I'm going to say, you know, Batman and Robin here. He's got to have his Robin. And um, I thought that there was definitely some, you know, a new wrinkles that they threw in there. And it was just a new energy, let's put it that way, having Benny Logan back into the fold. Yeah, and that's, that's what someone was going on the last couple of weeks. You know, without Benny Logan, Fletcher Cox seeing a lot more double teams. And, uh, you know, with Logan in play now, obviously it frees up a lot of more one-on-one matchups uh, there for him. So, Sean, one more question before we'll we, before we let you go, my man. And we do appreciate mm-hmm. the shout of Fox 29. Uh, Catch him on Fox 29. Love you, yeah, Sean. Yeah, my man. <laughs> the, um, I'll, I'll disagree with you a little bit in saying that, okay, a loss isn't the end of the world. We, we, we're going into week 11. We got seven games left. So I'll ask you this question. A win against the Seahawks means what? A loss against the Seahawks means what? God, a win. A win. I I don't even know what a win. If they go up to Seattle and beat Seattle, this city would be on fire. You know, those people would be going crazy. Um, If they beat the Seahawks, (laughs) if they beat the Seahawks, 
I, I, I mean, then you got to chalk it up. Like, look, they beat the Vikings, who really are, you know, falling down, but beat the Steelers, beat the Seahawks, beat the Falcons. Uh, you know, had the Cowboys in there, in there, you know, in, in the bullseye, and basically gave that game away in Dallas. Yeah, if they beat the Seahawks, man, anything's possible. And, and if they, if they, and I know it's cliche, but if they get into the playoffs with, with, with being able to dig on those wins and saying, "Hey, man, we could run with." anybody with anybody minus the Patriots but we can run with anybody um who knows what type of confidence that would, that would instill when the playoffs come rolling around if they're able to make the playoffs if they lose I, I hear what you're saying Iraq. you know there's there's only a couple games left you're right you're right and nothing is a guarantee you know the Bengals played the Giants tough on last night uh they gave that game away a little bit it was an ugly game but I think the Bengals are a little bit better than what their record shows so who knows what will happen Packers Monday night football crazy things happen on Monday night football will the Eagles go undefeated at home who knows um so if they lose, I, I really don't think it's like the end of the world. I just think they just got to focus, come back, come back to the drawing board. Uh, hopefully they don't get blown out. Hopefully it is a close game. And, uh, you know, then you got to focus on the three-division opponents, for, you know, continue to, to dominate at home. And if you get to that 10-win mark, and I know there's a bunch of teams that are lurking, but I think we could see who's real and who's not real. Um, they get yes. to that 10-win mark, man. We're talking about postseason football, and that would be amazing for Doug's first year. Absolutely. Yeah, well, hey, calm yourself over there. <laughs> calm yourself over there. Catch him on Fox. Catch him on phillyinfluencer.com. Hopefully we'll catch you at a tailgate sooner or later. We're gonna For the rest of the show, we're going to have your man Adrian holding it down for phillyinfluencer.com right yeah. here in studio. We appreciate you joining us and giving us some time. Sean Brace. <laughs>